I love long runs. Hi, I'm Ralph, one of the dangerous runner. If you enjoy running and you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, please consider doing so and click that subscribe icon down in the corner anytime during this video. Thank you so much. So why do I love long runs? Well, I get to spend time outside. I always love that. And especially after you do a long run, well, you feel kind of accomplished. You, you ran a longer distance and that's a wonderful feeling. So I love long runs. So what is a long run anyway? Well, there's no set definition. I think a long run is any run you do that's longer than what you normally do. If you run a short run and it's one to two miles, long run might be four or five. It's really up to you what you consider a long run. Now, what I use for myself is if I'm going to run longer than an hour, I consider that a long run. When I get ready to walk out the door to go run, my wife will say, is this a short run or a long run? And if it's an hour or more, I tell her, it's a long run, sweetheart. Now, the reason I picked that hour is you typically run out of glycogen stores at about the 75 minute mark. So if I'm going to run more than an hour, I want to have fuel with me. So I will put on my vest, I will carry energy gels, and of course I'll carry water. So it's a little more involved doing something more than an hour. But you define yourself what's a long run. But these tips I'm going to share with you apply to any long run. Now the first tip is prepare ahead of time. So I'm talking about preparation, I'm talking about your body. Obviously there's some mechanics you need to go through, make sure you got your energy gels and, and your running vest, your running pack. I'm talking about getting that body ready to do that long run. That really should start the day before. You want to make sure you're eating some carbohydrates and also make sure you're hydrating. Now, if I know it's going to be warm on the day I'm going to run or, or humid, I will include an electrolyte drink the day before. Then the morning before the run, I will have some carbohydrates, but not a lot. I don't want to have a heavy feeling in my stomach, maybe a piece of toast, maybe a half a bagel. But then I'll also have 16 ounces of water, of which will include some electrolytes. I want to get those electrolytes in me because I'm a heavy sweater, especially if it's summertime, it's warm out. And then the last thing I do before I walk out the door is I'll take one of my energy gels and I will take it. That'll give me a, a, a boost of about 20 grams of carbohydrates to really power my run in the beginning. So prepare the day before and certainly the morning before your long run. Now the next tip is run based on your energy level, not your pace. Now often runners get focused on pace, but you really shouldn't be running on, on pace, certainly on a long run. Pace is an outcome. At the end of the run, you can look at your app, how many miles did you run, how long did it take you, and that'll give you a pace. And that's good to know. It's always a good reference point, but don't get focused on pace. You more want to focus on your energy level. Or how are you feeling? Beginning of the run, you're probably feeling pretty strong, so you maybe can run a little harder, but don't run too hard. You want to make sure you last the whole run. But as your run progresses, you're going to start to feel tired. Make adjustments in what you're doing. Now, if you're a run, walk, run enthusiast like I am, I may start my run uh, with an interval of about one minute to one minute and 10 seconds running. And then as the run progresses and I get tired, I will back off on that. So maybe three quarters of the way through, I may back off that to 45 seconds to one minute and adjusting my pace to account for my energy level. So adjust your run based on how you're feeling in your energy level. So next tip is break it up. Come on guys, break it up. So the most important thing in doing a long run is getting all the miles in, but that should, can be done in one day. It doesn't have to be done in one run. In other words, you can split your run up maybe into two segments. Go out and run the first half, come back home, go back to your car, wherever you are, rest a little bit, get a little water, maybe eat a little something, and then go back and do the second half. It doesn't all have to be at one in time. Okay, no more than one long run per week, just one. So one long run per week is really important. You don't want to get overtired, especially as we get older. I could never do uh, more than one long run a week. And regardless of your age, one, one a week is plenty. Now the other thing to consider is if you are in a, in a training mode where you're increasing miles in every long run, you should occasionally take a long run and back off a little bit. For example, if I run six miles this week, seven miles next week, the third week I may want to back off Instead of running eight, I'll run five. That'll give my body a little more recovery time, not push it that third week, and help me get ready. So when I come back in that fourth week, and I'll run that eight, those eight miles and continue on in my path, increase it for another couple of weeks, and then take a week where I back off a little bit. So think about backing off a week, maybe every third long run, and, and give your body more chance to recover. So long runs are always a mental challenge, both in boredom and the defeat is saying, oh, I'm tired, I want to quit. So I have two tips related to those areas, boredom and refocusing your thoughts. So long runs are always challenging mentally and there's a couple of issues. One is boredom. So there's a couple of things to do with boredom. Now a lot of runners will listen to podcasts and music. That's a great thing, but still you may start getting that bad self-talk. You may start getting bored. So there are a couple of things you can do with boredom. And one of the big things is change up your run. And by that I mean uh, go to a different location, run a different uh, path, 
typically when I go for a run here in my residential neighborhood, I'll go out the door and I turn to the left. And that's just what I've been doing. But occasionally what I'll do is I'll turn to the right. Now that may seem like a minor change, but it gives a whole different viewpoint of my run. It's kind of a little different, helps change it up. I'm also a big uh, advocate of counting games. What I mean by that, well, one time I went for a run, decided I would count all the houses in my neighborhood. That occupied my mind as I was running, running around. You can do other things like that, like maybe count all the black mailboxes or count all the houses that have roses in their front yard. Or if you're running on a bike trail, count every cardinal or robin you see, something like that. And you get the idea. That'll help occupy your mind. One thing I also do when I was working, I was always composing emails in my head. I knew I had to go to work and maybe send an email. I would maybe compose that in my head. Today, I'm not, I'm not working anymore, uh, but I will maybe compose videos that I'm shooting. I'll maybe think through some of the things I want to say and what's important. So those kinds of activities in your mind can help alleviate some of the boredom of that long run. And of course, another big aspect mentally is that what I call uh, defeatist, where the self-talk is kind of negative. Oh, I'm getting tired. Oh, my legs ache. My legs are tired. So a couple things you can do with that. One is I call reframing. I'm sure the psychologists have different uh, a different name for it. For example, instead of saying I'm tired, you can say, yes, I'm feeling tired, but I know I have the endurance to make it. Or although my legs are getting tired, I know they're strong and I can complete this long run. So that's kind of reframing a little bit, acknowledging the issue, but kind of reframing it in a positive way. The other thing I do, I'm a big advocate of mantras. You know what those are? Those are short uh, sayings that you repeat over and over and over. helps occupy the mind, but also they have a positive spin, which is kind of giving your mind a different message. One of my favorites is I'm a strong runner or I'm a powerful runner or am I, I am a strong and powerful runner. I'll repeat those or I run effortlessly uh, one step at a time. I think you get the idea. Just create that, those mantras. So I don't do a mantra through the whole run. I'll do it when I'm getting into a mode where I'm getting a little tired. Maybe the self-talk is, oh, maybe I should quit. Then I'll start saying, oh, I'm a strong and powerful runner. I'm a strong and powerful runner and so forth. And that'll help me get, get through that and I'll continue on. So think of those couple of little mental tricks there to help you uh, kind of attack that negative self-talk. Hey, thanks for watching my video. Hopefully these tips will bring you more fun and enjoyment in your long runs. If you enjoy my videos, enjoy uh, learning about running, please hit that subscribe button and thank you very much. Happy running.